Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. And welcome to the fourth week of the Easter season. Um, we will begin on page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer for our morning prayer service, and then quickly move to page 80. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord, alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Now, let us say together, Christ our Passover, found on page 83. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. The Psalms. This morning we will read Psalms 41 and 52. 41 is on page 641. We'll read whole verse responsibly. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors and go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him, for he has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O oh Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Now turning to page... 657, we will read over as responsibly, Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, a worker of deception. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt. O oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. 
I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, and the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain, carrying the two tablets of the covenant in his hands, tablets that were written on both sides, written on the front and on the back. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved upon the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound made by victors, or the sound made by losers. It is the sound of revelers that I hear. As soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot, and he threw the tablets from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made, burned it with fire, ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. We will read Canticle 9, found on page 86, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, or they may lose heart. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but wholeheartedly fearing the Lord. Whatever your task, put yourself into it, as done for the Lord and not for your masters, since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You serve the Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong has been done, and there is no partiality. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. We will read Canticle 19, found on page 94, The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. One moment. Excuse me, I am confused. One moment. Matthew 5, 1 to 11. All right. It's according to Matthew. one ten. Yes, I've got it. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, I'm looking it up. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, turning to page 96, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness <coughs> during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the people of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican Communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. For the Diocese of Dunedin within the Anglican Church of Altaria, New Zealand and Polynesia. We pray for our own Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop. For our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop. For the Congregation of St. Philip's in Wiscasset. For the spread of the gospel to all the world. And for our Climate Justice Council. We also pray for our own parish of St. John's our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Veronica, Diana, Marilyn, Susan, Larry, Bob, Judy, Paul, Victor, Joe and his family, Megan, William, Linda and her family, and Allison. We offer continued prayers for Claire, Brian, Caleb, Donald, Amy, Faith, Alice, Jenny, Barry, Presiding Bishop Michael, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erling, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples and places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine, and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, Sudan, and Haiti. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm. And we pray that all people come to realize that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to keep expanding our understanding of who our neighbors are, and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the 
healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community. For Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine. For Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor. And for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Kathy, Kim, Susanna, and Lily. And finally, we pray for the departed, for Philip Frederick Sr., for victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, and for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. We are always happy and grateful that you've been with us and hope that you'll be able to join us again soon, perhaps tomorrow at nine. In the meantime, may we all know the presence of God in our lives and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. So again, thank you um, for your time and for your willingness and um, I hope a certain amount of joy in worshiping with us. May God bless us all this day. See you soon. <laughs>